welcome back to my channel. I'm Caitlin, I'm the Barefoot Mama. Uh, today I decided to make my video. I was challenged by Amanda over at Three Hens and a Baby um, to tell you what my top five crucial skills for homesteading are. I have a hard, hard one to like decipher down to five specific skills because Homesteading, in, in my opinion, is there's so many different things that you learn and adapt into your lifestyle that it's hard just to pick a few. So I was able, I did narrow it down, but I kind of did more broader categories. And within those categories, I put things that I felt were important for homesteading for us. This could be different from anybody else. So thanks Amanda over at Three Hands and a Baby. I appreciate the tag. So let's go ahead and get started. Number one, growing your own food. Growing your own food is so important because without food, we can't nourish our bodies, right? So there's a couple things with growing your own food. One of those things is gardening. You don't have to start huge. We didn't. My very first garden was in little pools, plastic kiddie pools, and I just did it in my parents' backyard. Granted, I have grown bigger and bigger and changed different ways with, you know, planting with pots and uh, planting in ground and doing raised beds. I've done a little bit of everything. But the last few years, my husband and I um, have done bigger scale gardens in ground only. And that's worked for us. There's a lot of components with that um, that you have to learn. Gardening is, is definitely something that um, you need to start small. And then you, as you learn each aspect, you can um, you know, expand your garden and expand what you're growing, your food, you know, once you've learned what compost and what mulching products work. Um, just different methods. I mean, there's so many different methods for gardening. So find what works for you. With growing your own food, I included uh, raising animals because I feel like that's something I don't necessarily, I haven't ventured into yet, but I want to. And I feel like it's important because you raise chickens for eggs, then you can actually raise them for meat and butcher your own chickens. Um, cows and goats for milk cheese, you know, cultured milk, buttermilk, sour cream, cream cheese. There's so many different avenues with having dairy on your farm or on your homestead. And there's just other like rabbits for meat. Like there's just, just different, um, different variables there that you can use if you're, you're growing for your own food, you're growing livestock as well. So I included that under number one. Okay. So let me show you what we've done so far. And if you're following my, my uh, channel, you already have kind of seen what we're doing. But let me show you what I mean by growing your own food. We have started our peppers and we will be starting many, many more. We're not doing anything fancy, but these are all different types of pepper plants. We have a grow light that we use. We grow. So we grow peppers, tomatoes, cucumbers, potatoes, we kind of have broadened our growing. Last year we just did a few things um, and we got really good at them. And that's something too. Start with what you really like. So say you only like tomatoes and peppers. Great. Start there and keep learning as much as you can. And when you've learned enough, move to something new and learn as much as you can about that. Um, and you'll be very successful, I promise. So. That's number one. So number two is preserving. Now, I, again, have a few different things under this umbrella category. Preserving to me is being able to take your food that you have grown in your yard and keep it so it lasts until you grow your garden next year. I have not mastered this yet. Um, I've done a lot of canning and I've learned how to you know water bath can this year we want to get a pressure canner 
and um, pressure, learn how to pressure can so that we can preserve meat, soups, beans, and tomatoes, and things that need to be preserved under pressure to preserve it in a way that water bath canning can't. Um, and that is an art in itself, trust me. So that's something I want to work on this year. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick. Behind me, I have three big racks like this. This is all canned fruit and vegetables from our garden and from a friend's orchard that we were able to glean um, and pick ourselves. That's, in my opinion, so important because my kids eat a ton of fruit and that is such a blessing to have in our cupboards to know it's right off the trees and I don't have to go buy it from the store. It's been preserved, it's safe, and it's healthy. So canning is huge for Hydrating is another way to preserve your food. You can de dehydrate fruit, um, vegetables, jerky. Um, there's so many different things that you can do with dehydration. And they last a long time. Um, so that's another great option. If you maybe not don't have everything to start canning or don't have the money to start canning this year, that's okay. Try to dehydrate some of those items if you have a dehydrator. You can even use the oven. I made um, fruit roll-ups and my kids loved it. Um, I made them, I didn't use have a dehydrator, I just used the, uh, the oven and it worked really, really well. So get creative and preserve. Last but not least on the preserve list is freezing. Um, we did not, because we did not have a pressure canner this last year, we froze a year's worth of spaghetti sauce that we made from our tomatoes and our basil. We froze them all in, you know, quart Ziploc bags. And it, we still have some in our freezer. So that's a third option for preserving your food. And if nothing else and you don't have, you have too much of an abundance of food, share with your neighbors, your family, your friends. They will love you, trust me. All right, number three, foraging. So this is something that my husband and I really have been passionate about. Um, probably the last, oh, year or so, um, our family loves to go out and find mushrooms. Um, a big thing with foraging, it's not just mushrooms there are edible plants you can harvest pine needles to make a pine needle tea um, herbs a lot of wild plants and edibles are out there but you have to know what is safe and if you don't do your research you could easily you know get into something that's not safe foraging for us is how we find our mushrooms for the year um, berries Logan berries. So foraging can have many different things, but make sure you definitely know your plant identification. It's something that could harm you because there are things that are poisonous and you have to be careful. But I feel like that is a very crucial skill to know. Eventually, if anything were to happen and you had to self-sustain on your homestead, you would need to be able to go out and forage for things to be able to survive. So we kind of practice a little bit of that here and we're actually gonna try to expand that this year. So you'll see us doing some foraging this year. Number four, now I have a medical background. Um, so this one's kind of more personal to me. Some people might not feel like this is crucial, but I do. So first aid and survival skills are really important. And I feel like if you don't know first aid, basic first aid and CPR, that could mean life or death. Basic knowledge of how to dress a wound, how to do if you have a burn, just different things like that, you know? And CPR, of course. CPR is very important and could save someone's life if they're having a heart attack or say someone's choking. That's, you know, life or death. So on top of that, survival skills specifically. Um, learning to build fire without a flame source, um, hunting, fishing, butchering, everything that goes along with that. Um, 
I've done a lot of fishing in my life, but I have not really done much um, like filleting and, and gunning a fish. I've never done any hunting. I would love to learn about hunting. My husband and I both have a um, curiosity about it and we want to learn more about it. You know, learning how to purify water. Learn just basic things that you would need to know to if you got stuck somewhere or even just here and say the well stopped working and you needed water, like what would you do? So I think like first aid and, and survival skills are really important to know just in general because you never know when you're gonna need to utilize them. Number five, homemaking and cooking from scratch. So I kinda have already dived into this a little bit this year which I'm excited about and I hope that I can keep going with it. But homemaking and cooking from scratch is something that I'm passionate about and especially now that I have been focusing on my health a little bit more, um, knowing what's in my food, what's in my cleaners, what's in my beauty products, um, what's in my, just in my home, what's safe, what's not safe, and trying to eliminate chemicals that shouldn't be here. So. I've been trying to learn to make more natural cleaners and laundry soap, dish soap. I want to start looking at trying to replace my beauty products with natural homemade products. Learning how to sew and hand stitching and you know basic homemaker skills. What a true homemaker used to be, those are the things that I want to focus on and learn and, and be able to produce myself. Cooking from scratch is also huge. Learning how to work with cast iron, um, making meals with what you have in your cupboards and not you know, running to the grocery store when you don't have something. Utilizing what you have on hand to the best of your ability and using homemade ingredients that are good for you is super important in my opinion. So those are my top five. Just a quick recap. Number one, growing your own food. Number two, preserving. Number three, foraging. Four, first aid and survival skills. And number five, homemaking and cooking from scratch. I hope these, I, these crucial skills helped you maybe br get some ideas of, oh yeah, maybe that's something I want to try. And um, I hope you do. I hope you grow your own garden, try preserving, maybe get excited get a pressure canner and, and try canning, you know, going out in the wild and looking for mushrooms and picking, you know, wild blackberries, but go out and try something new. That's what we're trying to do this year. Trying to broaden our horizons and learn more skills to add to our baseline. So I thank you guys for watching. I appreciate you being here and I hope this helped you guys. There are three homesteads that I want to tag in my video today. Those three are Jay at Almost Homestead, Chad and Shelby over at North County Off Grid, and Jen over at Haywire Homestead. I want to see what you guys think are your top five crucial skills.